it's just shocking and devastating and uh, feels so bad for the family. The memorial for Trina Hunt continues to grow outside her Port Moody home after homicide investigators confirmed her remains have been found. Just ahead, tributes and reaction from the community. Off the job and onto the picket line at a hotel used for mandatory quarantine near Vancouver International Airport. Just ahead, hospitality workers protest against layoffs and potential wage cuts. Good evening, this is City News at 6. We begin with breaking news. A man has been sent to hospital with potential life-threatening injuries following another brazen daytime shooting. We are live at the scene in Langley tonight. This latest incident happened at Willowbrook Mall this afternoon. RCMP were called to the mall at 3.30 where they found a man who was shot multiple times and was rushed to hospital. Just after 4 o'clock, a car was found on fire near a rural berry farm in Aldergrove. It's not clear if the vehicle is related to the shooting, and police say this does appear to be a targeted attack. A large area near Willowbrook Mall has been cordoned off as police investigate. This is the latest in a series of shootings across the Lower Mainland, and we will bring you more on this developing story as soon as it's available. Today's numbers on COVID-19 in BC cover a three-day reporting period. There are 2,174 new cases across the province since Friday afternoon, and 15 more people have died in the last three days. 474 people are in hospital, with 176 in intensive care. BC's vaccine supply is going to get a big boost this week, with a million doses scheduled to arrive this month. And because of the accelerated rollout, this does mean that you may not have to wait four months between your first and second shot. Dr. Bonnie Henry says she's optimistic those who are eligible will get their shot before Canada Day. We'll get there by <laughs> July 1st, and I think we're going to have a really great Canada Day this year. Um, but not, not a big party, just little parties. Um, but I, I think by the middle of June, we should be well, uh, well on our way. This is going to be a key month. We're in a whole different world now, and we're going to be uh, providing vaccine rapidly to lots more people. Our clinics are ready and able to scale up. For the second straight year, the celebration of light will not happen in Vancouver. The Vancouver Fireworks Festival Society says it's not feasible to go ahead with the event in a safe way due to COVID-19. Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry says despite the significant progress we're about to make with vaccinations, there will be not any, or rather there will not be any large events or festivals this summer. What we hope with the program that we are on now, with the amount of vaccine that we have, is that we will be able to have some small outdoor events. I can say there is not likely to be big events of any sort, even outdoors, in the, through this summer and into, uh, into the fall and winter of next year. But I can uh, see many situations where we could have smaller distance outdoor events this summer. The Anton vaccine may be offered to individuals 30 years of age and older without contraindications if the individual prefers an earlier vaccine rather than waiting for an mRNA vaccine and if the benefits outweigh the risk. The J&J COVID vaccine gets the all clear for those over 30. Traffic was snarled in and out of downtown Vancouver for a few hours this afternoon as climate activists staged a demonstration on the Lionsgate Bridge. Members of Extinction Rebellion held signs and banners as they marched through the Stanley Park Causeway. They eventually blocked the northbound lanes of the bridge. They're hoping to bring attention to what they say is Ottawa's lack of attention to address climate change. We um, chose the Lionsgate Bridge uh, to uh, walk on to uh, to really put a clear statement out to our leaders and the public uh, that our inlet is in danger, the life in it is in danger. If if we increase tanker traffic the way uh, we're planning to as a nation uh, with um, Trans Mountain Pipeline plans, that this inlet is is it's in grave grave danger of of losing all life in it. Police say seven demonstrators were arrested today. This was the group's third consecutive day of action in Vancouver. More than a dozen people were arrested on Saturday and Sunday, and the group has two more demonstrations planned for tomorrow and Wednesday. 
she just seemed like a wholesome, vibrant, joyful person that was loved by so many people. Outside Trina Hunt's home, a memorial continues to grow. It comes after homicide investigators confirmed her remains were found in Hope back in March, putting an end to the months-long search for the missing Port Moody woman. It was still shocking, even though I wasn't deep down, I wasn't surprised. I hit confirmed Saturday the case is now being considered a homicide and foul play is suspected. Previously, Port Moody police said they did not believe foul play was involved in her disappearance. It's just shocking and devastating and uh, I feel so bad for the family. Hunt was reported missing by her husband when he returned home from work in January and said the home was empty. Since then, massive search efforts have been underway across the Tri-Cities and the case has gained widespread attention. Facebook groups have been dedicated to finding Hunt, hundreds of posters have been on display and a massive banner went up at the Rocky Point overpass. We're not going to stop until we find her. Searchers had been canvassing the area around Hunt's Heritage Woods home for nearly four months and pleading for answers. We need Trina home. This has gone on long enough. We need answers. I worked with Trina for a number of years, closely together for three years, so uh, I have a real real connection with her and she was just a wonderful woman down to earth just uh, a lot of joy we had a lot of fun a lot of laughs together a lot of great conversations many people are stopping by to remember trina hunt some are complete strangers who helped with search efforts i just know that if it was me in that position as a as a mom or a family member or a friend that i would want all the support i couldn't just sit back and do nothing a statement from hunt's family thanks the community for its support in finding trina the community is just so strong and, you know, it's like a village here. Everybody knows everybody and we take care of our children and you need something, you can reach out to your neighbor and you just never expect something like this to happen here. And those stopping by the memorial are hopeful there will be closure. I just hope there's justice for Trina. What a way to go. In Port Moody, Miranda Fatour, City News. The integrated homicide investigation team has yet another case on its hands, this time a 19-year-old Surrey man in Surrey. It happened just after 1.30 on Friday afternoon. The man went to the hospital but later died from his injuries. Ahit says this is an isolated incident and doesn't appear to be linked with any of the recent acts of violence in the Lower Mainland. No arrests have been made. The Independent Investigations Office is trying to figure out whether police action or inaction recently led to the death of a woman. Investigators say the woman was arrested by Vancouver police just before 9 o'clock on Saturday morning along Powell Street near Jackson Avenue. The location is not far from Oppenheimer Park. Three hours later, she was found unresponsive in her cell, and despite efforts to revive her, she was pronounced dead. RCMP and Maple Ridge are looking for witnesses after a man and a woman were stabbed at a home. It happened at around 10.30 last night on Cook Avenue near Dudney Trunk Road and 210th Street. RCMP say two masked men got into a fight with the people in the home and assaulted a man and a woman. The man was taken to hospital with serious injuries but is expected to recover and the woman was treated for a minor injury. Investigators say the home is known to them. A morning strike at a Richmond hotel used for mandatory quarantine. Workers at the Pacific Gateway Hotel near Vancouver International Airport stormed the picket line in the early hours Monday, protesting layoffs and potential wage cuts. I was a hostess at Pacific Gateway Hotel for seven years. I have been permanently laid off for my job because we're unionized. We have one year from the last day we worked to be recalled back uh, for most of us. That time has been ended and now we're, we're out of a job. The hotel workers walked off the job around 5 a.m. Monday and say the strike is indefinite. The union representing hotel workers says 103 workers were fired, 42 of them just this weekend. And these are long-term workers. Some of them have worked in this hotel for almost 30 years. And the uh, hotel very clearly using the pandemic as an opportunity to fire workers, uh, try to replace them uh, for minimum wage. In a statement, the hotel's labor relations firm says in part, they're disappointed that the union has chosen to now strike instead of negotiating further. They add no employee at Pacific Gateway Hotel has been fired, but there have been permanent layoffs as mandated in the collective agreement due to the pandemic's impact on the entire hotel sector in the past year. Employees who worked at PG during the pandemic are not subject to permanent layoffs.
The union says Pacific Gateway has been a quarantine hotel since the beginning of the pandemic and that after the federal government took over, workers were displaced. And when they came in, they brought in the Red Cross to perform some of the duties that some of our members were performing, like cleaning rooms, um, delivering meals, and that meant putting out housekeepers uh, out of jobs. Out of the 103 workers recently laid off at the Pacific Gateway Hotel, the union says that around two thirds were women. A Royal Bank report in March says that during the pandemic, 200,000 women across Canada slipped into the ranks of the unemployed. Women took 65% of the job losses in the hardest hit sectors, food services and accommodation. While the federal government has recognized the impact the pandemic has had on women, even using language calling for a feminist response to economic recovery those facing layoffs in the hospitality industry are still waiting for action. So we just want to be supported by the federal government, make the change and not support a hotel that gets rid of their women, gets rid of their workers. Last week, over 1,200 hospitality workers in B.C. were put on notice for a potential lockout. But Hospitality Industrial Relations says no notice has been issued to the Pacific Gateway Hotel just yet. It also says the hotel is still operational, while the union plans to be on the picket line seven days a week. In Vancouver, Kier Junos, City News. Multiple employees at this quarantine hotel test positive for COVID-19. We're working with the facility to identify those who are impacted. But Toronto Public Health not revealing any details despite public concerns. With major construction on the Broadway subway set to get underway in the weeks ahead, the province is now looking to collect one more round of public feedback about what the new stations are going to look like. For the next week and a half, anyone interested can go on the Broadway subway project website and complete a survey which mostly asks how satisfied you are with these six unique station designs. Earlier feedback inspired changes like better bike parking, improved lighting and additional entrances to some stations. The new line is expected to open in 2025. A property manager on Vancouver, or rather Granville Island, is fuming. He says he's just been informed of a recent increase, a rent increase, during the height of the pandemic. David McCann is one of the five main property managers on the island. He says he was just informed by his accountant that Canada Mortgage and Housing, which manages Granville Island, hit him with a rent increase that's retroactive to September the 1st of last year. He says he finds the additional $2,000 a month increase ridiculous, given that his company, at the request of Ottawa, forgave some $600,000 worth of rent last year. And for the federal government, and. I'm a part owner. I'm a Canadian citizen. I own part of this island. This belongs to the people of Canada. And that they would, they would raise our rent, it's appalling. In the middle of a pandemic, when we listen to a prime minister talking about how we all have to work together and help each other, I mean, that's huge money for us. That's probably four tenants I can't help for three or four months. On top of this, McCann is also fuming over paid parking, which resumed on Granville Island at the start of this month. He launched a petition calling on Ottawa to eliminate pay parking on Granville Island. At this time, based on the current evidence, NASI recommends that similar to the AstraZeneca vaccine, the Anson vaccine may be offered to individuals 30 years of age and older without contraindications if the individual prefers an earlier vaccine rather than waiting for an mRNA vaccine and if the benefits outweigh the risk. Canada's top vaccine advisors say the Johnson & Johnson single-shot vaccine is recommended for adults over the age of 30 who don't want to wait for an mRNA shot. Despite this, the National Advisory Committee on Immunization is being asked to clarify why it says Canadians have the option of waiting for a Pfizer or Moderna dose if they don't want AstraZeneca or J&J. For an individual to choose to be vaccinated with either AstraZeneca or Janssen, they need to make an informed choice as to whether they would prefer to get vaccinated um, sooner with a Janssen or AstraZeneca vaccine or wait to receive the mRNA vaccine. The National Advisory Committee on Immunization is independent and doesn't make decisions on vaccine safety or effectiveness. That's Health Canada's job. Instead, the committee looks at the most recent studies and data available and makes recommendations that provincial health can follow or ignore. NACI members underline that this risk-benefit decision will vary depending on where you live and how bad the outbreak is there. 
if you were in an area with uh, um, a high degree of contagion, would you really want to wait another two weeks to get an mRNA vaccine? So the issue is, uh, how would you manage the risk getting a vaccine earlier, even if it's a viral vector vaccine, versus waiting for the mRNA vaccine. But all this is moot if provinces don't have any doses. The first shipment of J&J &J shots arrived last week, but distribution is on hold over concerns that the doses may have used ingredients from a Baltimore plant with known quality issues. Uh, Health Canada has been working very closely with their counterparts in the Food and Drug Administration, as well as with the manufacturer to get uh, more information, more details to actually uh, assure themselves uh, from a quality assurance process that, uh, uh, that there, there is or isn't a, an issue or a risk or problem. Now, NACI is also updating its recommendations for pregnant women, saying they should get an mRNA shot rather than AstraZeneca or J&J. &J. In Ottawa, Shaoli Lee, City News. Based on the amount of traffic coming and going from this hotel near Pearson Airport, you wouldn't know that it's currently under investigation for multiple cases of COVID-19. It also happens to be one of the quarantine hotels for travelers arriving in Canada. And yet, public health officials aren't saying much about the situation. No lockdown, no sign of even a slowdown at the Crown Plaza. This despite multiple staff members testing positive for COVID-19 in a place where travelers from abroad are supposed to be in isolation. I have complete confidence that they are uh, following appropriate guidelines, using the best available evidence to mitigate any public health risk and are managing cases and contacts in accordance with all the protocols that are out there. That's the extent of the information Toronto Public Health is willing to provide despite an investigation into how many people may have been exposed to the virus and where it may have originated from. Toronto's medical officer of health citing the need for more information before providing the public with details. I can only reassure you and the rest of the public that uh, the appropriate steps are being taken and that should there be any further public notification that's required, that we will do so in accordance with our current practice. In a statement to City News, the Public Health Agency of Canada said it has been informed by management of a government-authorized hotel in Toronto that some employees have tested positive for COVID-19. The hotel is taking direction on any further procedures as directed by Toronto Public Health. Once you go and move to this sort of setting, you really have to m make sure that it is very, very locked down, uh, very controlled, uh, and what, you know, from what I've heard, the stories I've heard is that it, it really isn't as controlled as it should be. Daniel Kersner arrived home from Europe a couple of months ago and stayed in another hotel under quarantine where he felt unsafe. The experience of staying in a quarantine hotel was probably one of the most dangerous things that I did in my travel journey. It was one of the most unsafe environments that I went into multiple touch points, getting into the hotel, having to engage with different people. The, the chances of this happening are low, and we don't know that the people who are working there got infected from working there or if they got infected from the community. Toronto recently issued a Section 22 order requiring businesses to report an outbreak of five or more cases. At that point, a full or partial closure can take place. What happens should it be a hotel it's not yet known. If there is a need uh, to, you know, move to a Section 22 order or, um, you know, a, an outbreak is, is formally declared and we, we get to that point, we have accountability and reporting mechanisms in place that would, of course, apply in this situation. Dr. Eileen Davila citing confidentiality and privacy as reasons for not divulging any further information at this point, despite the fact that Toronto Public Health does provide information on other workplace outbreaks. This, of course, is one of 20 hotels used for quarantine in Toronto. At this point, it's not known how many travellers are isolated here. Mark McAllister, City News.